Welcome back to Top Story. Today joining us, Cheryl Evans-Price, who is running as a trustee for the Prince Township and for Sioux North for the ADSB. And that's coming up in the municipal election. <sighs> How are you? <laughs> I'm well. Thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. So good to meet you. I've heard lots about you. Now, tell us first of all about your background politically. Are you have you been politically active? I have. Well, currently I sit as trustee for Sioux North and Prince Township at Algoma District School Board. I um, have been vice chair of the school board for the last two years, and I also. Um, sit on the policy development work team at the Ontario School B Public School Boards Association in Ooh. Toronto. So what does that mean? What's the policy team do? And the policy team reviews uh, provincial policy and makes uh, suggestions and recommendations um, on at the provincial level. So do you feel like, I'm thinking because we're, we're sort of northern, on, well we're not sort of, we are northern Ontario after all, do you feel like you have a voice? Do they listen to you in Toronto? Absolutely. Well, uh, we are, I am the Northeastern Board's representation on, uh, on that particular policy work team and they want Northeastern, Northwestern and and then all of Southern Ontario representation uh, to get a full scope of what uh, Ontario's challenges are and what policies need to be developed. Now, why did you focus on uh, becoming a school trustee? Why not, you know, a counselor or a reeve or? Well, in, uh, I live in uh, uh, Hayden mm -hmm. uh, on Lower Island Lake. Uh, oh, we, so are, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we are an unorganized uh, township mm -hmm. and all of Sioux North is unorganized, so we don't have Reeves and counselors uh, out there. But what brought me to the trustee uh, table was I sat uh, on accommodation review committee at a Weir's public school, which was the public school that my children went to in Hayden. And I led my community through a rigorous process of accommodation review. Um, and the board eventually chose to uh, close Weirs. Um, and we moved our children to uh, Mountain View Public School because we really loved that community and rural feel for our kids uh, growing up in the school system. Uh, and it just so happened that the municipal election for trustees was coming up Th that year. And I thought I would just throw my hat in the ring and see what happened and the rest is history. Boy, you know those issues when it comes time to to have the government come in and take a look at a school and whether or not the school is going to be able to, you know, stay active and, and be alive still. That's a long process. Must have been disappointing. It was very disappointing. Yeah. The community was very involved in, in that particular review um, and it was a long process at that time. Uh, since I've been sitting on the Board of Trustees, uh, the previous government and this government has put a moratorium uh, on school closures. Uh, it's a provincial issue. Um, low enrollment and programming impact these decisions and funding. Um, and uh, right now they're uh, again reviewing uh, the accommodation review process and uh, I think, you know what, I think that's a really good point to make because it's so hard to not take it personally, right? It's our kids, it's our schools, but it is a big issue across the whole province. Absolutely. It's certainly not secular to mm -hmm. Algoma District School Board. It is province-wide and uh, it's a funding issue and a programming issue. So uh, it's something that needs to be seriously considered by our government and then by our school boards and certainly by our communities. So I'm anticipating that's going to continue to be a focus for you when you win again. Well, <laughs> I am very hopeful to win again. Um, it is. I'm very passionate about rural and community schools. I'm passionate about, uh, about all schools and all of our students. As the school board representative, a trustee for my area, uh, I not only represent and advocate for the constituents who sit uh, in Prince Township and in Sioux North, Gooley and Searchmont, Hayden and Batchewana, but I also represent present an invoice for all students and parents. With regards to, um, you know, right in the middle of, of a new government taking over, um, some huge issues have, have come to light with Doug Ford and his government. Um, none of the least is sex education and the big controversy, everyone's talking about whether or not it should stay the way it is, whether it should be put back to 1998, I think is the year. And it's an interesting issue because everybody has an opinion. There's hardly any gray area there. How, how do you feel like you can either advocate for or against it? 
Well, um, to be honest, as a school board, uh, we are mandated by the provincial government to deliver a curriculum that's put forward. Um, I think that, you know, the Human Rights Code uh, says that all organizations to make sure that they need to have a welcoming and inclusive environment for students. Um, and what I want to encourage all constituents and all citizens of this province is to engage in the public consultation that's coming up because our voice matters and we need to speak either way on the topic um, and really fill out the consultation as it comes and not be apathetic to it because I think the more voice out there the better uh, our students and the rollout of the sex education curriculum however it's going to be is is uh, going to be dictated by what we say. How is that information going to come to us? Is, is there going to be an actual forum? Will there be a survey? Uh, well, I, I, I'm not certain because mm -hmm. it hasn't been released by the Ministry of Education yet exactly. I, my assumption is that it's going to be an online survey of some kind. Mm -hmm. With regards to, to that issue, um, there was lots of confusion by teachers and parents and even some of the kids, some of the older kids in high school, for instance, um, as to, because it happened so quickly, was, was the, the agenda actually put in place? Was, were the changes made already or were the teachers going by last year's curriculum? Right. So uh, when Doug Ford ran on a campaign that he and his government was going to do this. So this is a campaign promise of revoking the 2014 uh, uh, health and physical education mm -hmm. curriculum. When he first announced it, um, from what I understand, the plan was not posted right away as mm -hmm. a tool on the Ministry of uh, Education right. website. Um, and I do believe that there are tools uh, now and that boards are delivering messages to their teachers about the curriculum that they want to teach. Um, but also encouraging people to remain a welcoming and inclusive environment because it's very important for students, uh, all of our students, to feel like they are included, mm -hmm. that their families are included, and that their voices are heard uh, in the classroom system. And it's everybody's school. The students need to know it's everyone's school. Absolutely. Yeah, they need to feel that. Um, with regards to um, some of the other issues that you're you're thinking are, are going to be issues coming up, um, sex ed obviously is a big one because everybody's talking about it right now. Um, and a lot of people around that issue were saying, why why don't they consult so much with math or English or French or, you know? Yeah. So my understanding is uh, the Ministry of Education um, let out that some of the consultation will have to do with the math curriculum as well. The new math curriculum is what they call it. Um, and also perhaps about uh, the impacts of EQAO testing and other things mm -hmm. as well. So it's going to be, um, from what I understand, and I have not seen any documents on it but a, a encompassing kind of mm -hmm. uh, consultation. How do you feel the EQAO is effective? Is it or not? Um, uh, EQAO is a snapshot in time. So, uh, you know, it um, grades on uh, math and uh, literacy and um, for one test or one testing period at one point in time. Is it effective? I'm not certain. I'm not, I'm, you know. It's it, fairly new still. I suppose. It's been around for a number of years yeah. now. So there's cohorts of, of information, but what that information does, I'm not sure. I know that uh, in our schools, in Algo Major School Board, and something that we advocate for is resources. Mm -hmm. Resources for learning and teaching. So if a school is grading low um, in math, say, then our school board has um, adopted a math leader. So the math lead is a yeah. full-time support that comes in and works with teachers on curriculum and works with students in the schools at the classroom level um, helping our kids um, learn and develop better. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great resource. Absolutely. I wish I would have had that. Maybe I would have passed math. <laughs> yeah. And certainly certainly they put it into the schools with the most need based on sure. based on grades and uh, the EQA to o testing that's coming out. And you know what? I think it's an awesome thing to, to keep an eye on that snapshot. 
Absolutely. Yeah, it's so good of you to come in and uh, visit with us. Thank you so much. Best Thank of luck you. on this campaign. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about community. I am uh, passionate about uh, our Indigenous curriculum moving forward and speaking forward. Um, I am I am certainly a passionate person when it comes to public, public education because public education is the greatest equalizer in our society. So... I can tell how passionate you are. Yeah, Best thank of luck. Thanks, Thanks so very much. much. Julian. Thanks for having me. We'll be back with more top stories right after this.